you or someone you know was just diagnosed with Stargardt's disease. Brad, what the hell is Stargardt's? Stargardt's is a juvenile form of macular degeneration where you lose your center vision over time. The reason for that is because of a gene mutation that causes you to create this byproduct that has its name called lipofuscin in your eyes. It's, a, it's toxic to your cells in the middle of your vision and it destroys them, uh, basically impairing your center vision. It's a problem converting vitamin A. So practically, what does that mean? What happens to your vision and what can you see? Uh, things can be different for different people. There's different sort of gene mutations, but for Brian and I, it means that our peripheral vision is good. We walk around, we navigate New York City, no big issues, but when it comes to recognizing faces and reading print, we have a lot of trouble. What I'll add is, is the main question we do get around Stargardt's is Brad and I don't have to use the assistance of a cane or a seeing eye dog to get around. Uh, because of keeping a lot of the periphery, we don't bump into too many things. And so we, you know, as Brad said, we do have trouble reading and recognizing faces and detail work. But the other thing about Stargardt's disease that you should know is that it is a degenerative eye disease. So tomorrow, all of the vision isn't going to be gone. You have a grace window, and that can be different for, for most people. For Brad and I, we lost our vision fairly quickly over several years. So it isn't going to just disappear. You are going to have time to adjust and become more comfortable with the disease before your vision deteriorates too far. To give you some context on Brian and I's experience with Stargardt's disease, I'm five years older than Brian and I failed the kindergarten eye chart, which sort of indicated that I had a problem with my eyesight. It took a long time to get diagnosed. Technology is a little bit better today. It probably can happen a little bit quicker, but this is a rare disease. So getting diagnosed is quite difficult. Uh, but this happened at age five for me and around the same age for Brian. And so we've experienced the degeneration of Stargardt's for about 25 years now. And our vision today uh, is very functional. We have between 2200 and 2400 vision. And when you do your research online, you're gonna learn that 2200 is sort of that line where they say that you're legally blind. Um, but through this series and through this video, we're gonna actually tell you a little bit about what that means for somebody with Stargardt's disease, because we've maintained a lot of functional vision. And the reason we mention that is because when we talk to parents who have kids who are recently diagnosed with Stargardt's, they basically assume their kids are going fully blind, lights out, uh, fast. And that just was not our experience. Certainly could be the experience for somebody, but we haven't really met those people. Um, and we've met a lot of people with Stargardt's disease. So part of this is to put that fear of going completely blind, uh, rather not so much the fear, but just the misinformation of that at ease. So what can you do right now? Because that is assumedly where you're at. First and foremost, if you are not with a retinal specialist, your optometrist or whoever was the original diagnoses can very easily point you in that direction. Second, you should get gene tested to understand if A, it is Stargardt's disease because there are a few diseases that seem similar, especially early on, and two, to understand the mutation of the ABCA4 gene that you specifically have. The benefit of doing this, one, information is power, and two, there are a lot of clinical trials out there right now that you need to be genetically tested for, to be eligible for, or to be able to get more information on. You're probably in the middle of information gathering. That's why you're watching these two oafs talk to you on camera right now. There are some amazing resources out there. The Foundation Fighting Blindness at blindness.org is one of our favorites. They cover all clinical trials, they give practical advice on visual impairment, and they kind of give you a plethora of places to, to look and continue your research instead of just wildly Googling. Two, if you wanna go see a large community of them, 
check out any Two Blind Brothers video. We have some amazing folks out there that love to tell their story and talk about who they are, and that's all in the comments on all of our videos. And frankly, we've seen a lot of friendships blossom just by a Facebook message saying, hi, my son was recently diagnosed. Can you tell me about your experience? It's always valuable to get other opinions. You know, there are people in this country who solely focus on that disease. Mm -hmm. And you should look up who those people are. We're gonna include a list of resources below to kind of point you in, in some directions to help you do that. Uh, but you're going to basically hear from people who study this very intensively what their, uh, what their analysis is of the state of the disease, what the opportunities are, whether there's clinical trials that you could potentially be enrolled in, um, and good health habits that have some efficacy of slowing down the progression of the disease. Couple really simple ones. Sunglasses and staying out of bright sun in the eyes. As I understand it, bright sun is one of those things that is a catalyst for the reaction in your eye that causes the damage. So wearing sunglasses helps slow down that damage. Another one, is making sure that you're not over consuming vitamin A. Vitamin A is the thing that your eye is having trouble metabolizing. Making sure you're not consuming excessive amounts of it is very important. Do we monitor our vitamin A diet on a daily basis? No. no. But do I make sure I'm not taking you know, a 10,000 IU uh, vitamin A tablet every day? Yeah, and number three, there's some nice eye health supplements. Lutein vitamins are good for um, retinal health, so it seems. Uh, obviously, somebody who's a medical doctor can give you more information on that. These are just sort of the three things that we've learned from growing up with the disease. And finally, and this is probably the most difficult to do, is take a big, deep breath. This goes out to the parents out there, and the advice that our mom has given is your child or the person diagnosed with Stargardt's hasn't changed. They're the same person they were yesterday. It's just the perception, your perception of them that has been shifted because of this diagnosis. Don't project 10, 20 years into the future because it's not, not going to be beneficial. I talked to one mother the other day whose six-year-old son, she was worried about him going to prom and not being able to drive his date in 11 years. And if he's anything like me, getting a date is actually gonna be the bigger problem. But don't project onto the future. Get ready for today and just try and soak up as much information as you can. And if you do need a source of inspiration, there's some amazing people out there who have retinal eye disease, who have climbed mountains, become congressmen, become governors, broken world records. So it really isn't a death sentence. I think you're gonna be very surprised at how capable you or your son and daughter, if they're the one diagnosed, is going to be. We're going to get to the topics in different videos, but school, work, friendship, sports, all of these are not going to be as affected as you may be thinking right now. And it'll take some time for you to have a confidence around that. But we just want to say here at the outset that we live very capable full lives and we're hoping we can help get you over that hurdle that you're so scared and nervous and confused about the diagnosis right now. And finally, if you are watching this video and you have gone through Stargardt's disease yourself or with a loved one, please do leave your experience, your comments, and your information in the comment section down below to help provide a little bit more color on what exactly to expect and best practices. Thank you, and we will see you in the next video.